add in a curve and shape it however you want. This is important because it's going to be the path of your spaceship. A little idea before you get started is to have a rough idea of what you're going for, like a rubbish storyboard or something. Just get the idea of the motion you're going for. For me, I just pictured it going under a Star Destroyer. In the curve settings, up the resolution preview to 240 and the render settings. This will get rid of all those little bumps. I'll leave the link for these two awesome models in the description. Make sure to download them. For the next curve of the bunch, you can just duplicate your first one and it'll copy all the settings. Then just change it up a little bit in edit mode and make it look super cool. Try and get them try and make the curve so that it, when you do the camera movement they're both in the scene. Now select the TIE Fighter, head over to the Object Constraints tabs, choose Follow Path and choose the TIE Curve. Make your animation about 70 frames long, then hit I at the first bit of offset and then for the last frame do minus 100 and then I again. You'll then see that now when you play the animation, you have to set it to linear by hitting T linear on the timeline. Now it's time for animating. This bit is a bit tricky, but just set a nice starting keyframe, hit I location rotation, then play through and make different changes to the X-Wing or TIE Fighter and hit I location rotation. This will save your changes and gently break into that position. Remember to keep playing it back because this is a little trick to master your end product. Now it's time to copy the same steps for your second spaceship. Animate the offset value and animate itself. Remember a little tip is to always set it to linear. This can just be done by hitting T linear on the timeline. Just go through and start making changes. Make it look amazing. Also don't hesitate to change up the curve while you're animating. It doesn't affect anything and helps you get a good idea of what it looks like. Here are a few tips to create a star field in Blender's Shader Editor and then the World tab. Just add in a colour ramp and then a noise texture. Plug the factor of the noise texture into the factor of the colour ramp and the colour of the colour ramp into the colour of the world background. Then tighten up the black values, make scale 200 on the noise texture, switch to cycles and GPU rendering. The black slider will con um, decide how many stars there are in your sky. Feel free to add in some extra colours like blue and orange. This will add some variation to your stars and it will look super super cool. Please feel free to add in some pre-made models. I brought in some star destroyers right here and they look dope. Probably an obvious thing now but make sure to position the curves so that they're not clipping with anything and just look good. Here what you're seeing is just some simple lighting with area lights. They're really handy, set to about 500 strength and they do a good job. Now it's time to do that cam curve. Copy the same technique and duplicate it again. Now change it up, continually checking that it looks good. Edit mode is a great way to do this. Now add in a camera and copy the steps we use for the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter child. Follow path, animate the offset, and choose positioning. It's really simple, but super cool. Remember to set it as linear movement. It really changes it completely. Make some nice movements using the eye location rotation. Now I'm going to set up some lighting for my spaceships. This is important because you do want it to be well lit. But do remember one big thing, that this is in space and space is dark. The only light in space will be coming from spaceships and planets. So you've got to remember that when, um, when lighting your scene and making sure it's not too bright or glary. Because that will create something very unrealistic. Here I made a little explosion sim and just baking it. Feel free to bring in your own explosion simulations. Looking back it's beginning to look really cool. Now you just want to bring up your samples, adjust your focal length and make a new folder for a PNG sequence. A PNG sequence is definitely the way to go and not an mp4 video in cycles. I hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial and get something really really cool out of it.